1999, we had uh, a National Year of Reading in the UK, and Oxfordshire Libraries paired up with Oxford United Football Club, and then they invited me out to do some things with the project. They integrated the storytelling into their own work, and that became the basis of what we called Kick Into Reading. And I got to know the coach of Oxford United, Peter Rose Brown. And Peter Rose Brown said, you should do this with other clubs. And, and we thought, well, we'd like to do that. Me and the, the librarians and some people at the National Literacy Trust who'd gotten involved. They go to a school to teach sport. If it's a rainy day, they don't cancel the sport. They now say to the teachers, oh, give us the library, we'll tell stories instead. The whole, motive, the whole uh, kind of philosophy behind the football project, it was part of a big program called Reading the Game. And that looking that, that men and women who play sport, who teach sport, children often look up to. And so uh, as part of the community work that they do, we were training the players and the coaches and other people who work at the club, clubs to tell stories and read aloud stories to children who didn't like school, didn't like reading, didn't belong to the library, had great success. Think of it, ladies and gentlemen, 100,000 schools like this from coast to coast. Every year, whole forests are cut down to supply the paper for these grotesque daubs. And we coo over them as though they were Van Gogh's or Rembrandt's. I'm afraid Mr. Avery hasn't much faith in the unspoiled instincts of childhood. Faith? My dear lady, childhood is a congenital disease and the purpose of education is to cure it. A lot of new studies coming out in cognitive science and neurology and in literacy are indicating the importance of narrative in young children's development. And what these teachers said 120 years ago, when you analyze what they're saying, they were saying basically what the scientists are saying now. Um, they didn't have the experiments to prove it. Their conclusions came through observation, through practice, intuition. But we think they were right. We think that what they were doing has a lot to say about things that, uh, that we refer to as critical literacy, to um, cognitive development, uh, to socialization of children, that we think it, 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 it's going to be exciting. As Peter Rhodes Brown said, this is the best example I've found in all my studies of narrative and cognition. I, it, it, it demonstrates, I think, a lot. One day he said to the children, I love watching your faces when we tell stories, because when we watch your faces as we tell a story, we can see what you're thinking. And he said, you're thinking about what just happened and what comes next in the story. And he said, it's the same when you play football. You're thinking about what's just happened, where am I, where's the ball going, where are the other players going, what do I need to do next? And he says, but you're not really thinking about it, you don't know you're thinking about it, it just all happens really automatically. He said, when you listen to stories and tell stories, when you play football and watch football, he says, you're using the same part of the brain. Because that's the one thing that's different, I think, with athletes from others, is that their intellectual energy and, and experience is as much with dealing with the physical space they work in. They may not be a slick performer. Someone might say, oh, they mispronounce words, or they say like and ah uh, and okay a lot. But in terms of how they engage the listeners and hold them, yeah. and know how to pace it so that it's a real drama, so there's a really good punchline, whether it's a laugh or a shock or whatever, and I think it's partly if you really get into, especially a team sport, but even if you follow a, 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 an amazing solo athlete, like a boxer or a tennis player or a jockey, um, you know all these stories about them. You know, you develop a conflict right away. It's like, he's the good guy, he's the good guy, she's the, the good guy, he's the bad guy, you know, uh, they're the antagonist, this is the protagonist, and all the backstories. Oh, she's been injured. Is she going to be able to do the routine? You know, he's on a transfer list. Is, is his mind elsewhere? Is it on the match? Um, So-and-so's in the scandal sheets getting a divorce or gotten caught with drugs or something. Do you know what I mean? Totally. So all that stuff when we're reading or listening to a story that triggers memories and images and associations, I think that same mental process goes on when we watch athletics of some kind whether it's a, a, a rugby match or a football match or an ice hockey game or a boxing
boxing match or a tennis match, you know, we, we become engaged with it. It's that same mental state or a similar mental state. Um, so that's why I think, you know, Peter Rosenbaum was right. Um, um, and that's, that's what I want to keep studying is I think that's a long piece of, of study I'm going to be doing.